Hello everyone, I'm Charlie and this is a special edition of One Guy's Opinion where I will be talking uh, about Superman. So uh, yesterday I was in the uh, All-Star Superman Hangout wrap-up uh, hosted by Sleepy Reader. It was, you know, La Raza, Adam Steven. Wednesday Serial and myself as well as you know Sleep Reader uh, talking about Superman about our impressions of All-Star Superman um, unfortunately I had some technical problems and I couldn't really say much um, about Superman and I could you know talk for hours but you know uh, thinking a bit about um, All-Star Superman and some really good stories uh, I could recommend people to to try and if you look at my um, channel I've done that before um, recommending some stories that I really enjoyed um, the Greg Rucker run in Adventure Superman back in 2004 prior to the 4 or 5 prior to uh, Infinite Crisis that was a, a great run I really enjoyed it especially the first half because well the whole run uh, but you know the ruined story that's you know the main uh, story that Rock, Rocker uh, wrote was great. Unfortunately, with Infinite Crisis and what happened up to that, uh, Rocker didn't really write all of uh, his all of all of the um, issues. Especially at at the end, he actually co-wrote some of them. Um, but you know. Anyways, those were great. I recently reread that. Give me a second. It's getting kind of cloudy here, so Let's see if I could add a little more uh, brightness here. Here we go. Sorry about that. Just it's getting very cloudy, and uh, I don't want to take too long. Just turning on the lights. Uh, that was a great run. Uh, I really enjoyed that. Uh, um, of course, there's you know some other stuff uh, that was recommended in in that hangout. Uh, Jeff Jones run, you know, in action in his action comics run. All of it, not just Last Sun, but all of it is you know a great. Uh, Superman run by, by Johns. You know, you got, of course, Last Sun, you got uh, Escape from Rizarro World, um, Superman and the Legion of Superheroes, um, Superman Brainiac, which uh, I, I talked a bit about it a while back uh, in the hangar I did with uh, Roger. Um, I mean, series I, I really recommend as well is Superman, Supergirl, Milestorm. I've talked about that one before. There's this Elseworld that came out around 2011, I believe, 10 or 11. Uh, Superman, The Last Family of Krypton. I did a video on that one as well uh, because it sort of is a, like an Elseworld, but it does have uh, uh, elements of the uh, classic imaginary stories from the um, 60s and 70s uh, where you know it's an art in the history but despite the changes were created there uh, fate can be totally changed so while you know the story explores what would happen if the entire entire L family came to Earth uh, and their impact 
on on the world you also get a new take on the origin of Superman how Kal-El you know ends up becoming a you know Superman despite all of these uh, this uh, all of these sort of uh, changes that occurred in in this sort of timeline or altered history um, and um, those are great reads of course and I've often forgot to mention I I haven't even mentioned this run um, which is Kurt Busiek's run with that run in Superman while um, you know the main part of Jeff John's run was happening so uh, that that's actually more in vain in the vein of all-star superman a much more classic take on the character uh, it's got some you know crazy ideas but really not in, in a way that grant morrison would do but, but the way they work within the context of you know superman's world i mean during the that run um uh, part you know while you know jeff johnson were you know very um tightly written stories you know arcs uh you know jeff uh Kurt Busiek's run sort of was a little bit wider into the um, whole metropolis. Uh, give me a second. Okay. Oh, yeah. There we go. So, Jeff uh, John's arcs were very defined. You know, he would be, you know, last time was, you know, it's something. Uh, then you know, escape from bizarre world you know a lot of his stories sort of took place in uh, other places you know in bizarre escape from bizarre world you know he goes to bizarre world then he goes to the future so there's very little of you know metropolis and you know his supporting cast very little of them in john's run but you know music in his superman run he does the whole metropolis thing um, so well we get an, a whole new design for for the city as well a very scientifically advanced city you know, you know there's um they actually created this place called the avenue of tomorrow where all the high tech and high science um you know businesses were uh for example uh uh and you know you get to see a much more smarter superman i guess uh not you know um where he actually does i believe it's been a while since i read it but you know he actually sort of built some sort of gadgets here and there uh he isn't you know just plain muscle like most writers sort of think of superman as being um we get some sci-fi in, involved there as well some sci-fi stuff uh with uh, the insect queen uh they bring that back he brings that back the insect insect queen um we got the Kryptonite Man, uh, you know, um, which is a callback to like an old uh, villain from the Silver Age, um, as well as the Insect Queen. He also brings back another villain that sort of played a big role, somewhat, between the Silver and the um, Bronze, the 60s and the 70s, called Almalak, a uh, space pirate who he spent on destroying uh, you know kryptonians he actually was created by jim shooter in fact i believe and 
you know, he appeared in the uh, 1967, I believe. Yeah, 1967. Like the uh, Parasite, you know, when he had like two appearances, then it wasn't really used until, you know, the uh, Bronze Age. Uh, we got some stuff with uh, Inter Gang. Uh, so, it, and even the, the Prankster was brought back, and the Prankster is a much sillier villain, you know, that doesn't necessarily fit in the uh, current, or at least, uh, climate in, in comics um, but music found a way to make him interesting by making him instead of being uh, just in a criminal with some silly gimmick he actually m made that the prankster be someone that other criminals would hire and create distractions for Superman so while wow, Superman is distracted with uh, that, that the prankster's gimmicks, they could, you know, pull off their job without Superman noticing it. So I found that was a very interesting take on, on this villain. Uh, but it seemed that um, at times, at least at the time I was reading it, a lot of fans hated Kurt Busiek's run. I don't know why. Uh, this is like the most classic Superman you could ever find. Uh, very, you know, I guess it did feel a bit kind of old, old school, you know, very bronze agey, very 19 stuff that you would find between the 70s and the 80s. Of course, you know, Busiek is. Uh, old school in, in his writing uh, so he does do a lot of compressed storytelling he is a bit wordy um, at times and uh, but it's in people you know will criticize him on that or they would say because for example if uh, an alien threat defeated Superman they would be like oh my god you know he's Superman he can't be defeated by anything or by anyone uh, Kurt Busiek doesn't understand Superman or DC doesn't understand Superman and, I, and at that time I was thinking like man I mean he may be super powerful on earth but that doesn't mean that you know in the uh, universe there aren't beings that are you know much more uh, powerful than Superman uh, if if and you know there you have good examples of a uh, Superman stories where uh, they were light and fun you know did you have a, a much more darker story at the beginning but still with the certain lightness to it. Unfortunately, uh, he also had to tie in some issues to the uh, countdown weekly that was coming out at the time. That will lead uh, to um, Final Crisis, I believe. Yeah, I think so. Uh, but they were all light and fun stories uh, that perhaps, you know, in our current society might have seemed you know not very realistic uh, or edgy or something like that uh, and I think that's the problem I mean you got somebody like Grant Morrison who was able to mix the um, silliness and you know he's Grant Morrison so it's gotta be brilliant right? and it, it is brilliant but somehow people are more willing to, to accept that to you know Kurt Busiek writing Superman stories that have that same sort of sensibilities 
that Ulster Superman has. Uh, and that, you know, previous eras of Superman had, that there are people that love, you know, there are people that love the uh, Silver Age and, you know, the Bronze Age. Uh, there was this site at that time called Superman Through the Ages. It's still around, it's semi-defunct, uh, but it was a site dedicated to the uh, Golden Age, but mostly to the Silver and the uh, Bronze Age. So, you know, a lot of stuff from the 60s through before Crisis, so between maybe, you know, 1958 to... 1986 before the whole relaunch came about uh, and of course you know some stuff from the 30s and the 40s and early 50s and they had a really good section on the history of Superman in, in fact he was in the 70s late 70s early 80s that uh, this writer, uh, Elliot Magan, Elliot S. Magan, uh, who was one of the main writers at DC, and, you know, I think he did some Justice League with uh, another writer, Curry Bates. There were uh, the main Superman writers, Curry Bates, Elliot Magan, Martin Pasco came in later, uh, but Magan actually created this whole uh, mythology around Superman. Um, he wrote a couple of novels. One of them, I think, was called Miracle Monday. Um, uh, that sort of created this whole holiday based on an event that occurred, you know, during Superman's time. Uh, he and if you look at Superman. 400 that issue um, sort of uh, also expands on that whole uh, mythological element that was added to Superman uh, in fact Miracle Monday introduced a character called Christine Wells who then showed up I believe in an annual for DC Comics Presents in a story called The Last Secret Identity, if I'm not mistaken. And this character sort of, be this character then became Superwoman. And, and it was in comic book form a sequel to that novel that Magin wrote, thus making that novel a uh, part of Superman canon, strangely enough. Uh, the the idea, for example, of LexCorp started in at was created by Mag and not by John Byrne or Mark Fullman during the uh, post crisis thing. You no, know, they were mentioned of it way before a uh, crisis hit, or uh, and the post crisis universe began. Uh, the whole idea of Superman living forever, if not forever, for a very long time, that wasn't really an idea that existed before, you know, Magin took over, did create his whole mythological element to him. So, uh, that was added in the late 80s. In the mid 80s, uh, sorry, and it's taking a bit of a road here as well. Uh, so, anyways, like I was saying, so, uh, uh, so this site loved that uh, that era, and and you know, music sort of channeled that into a much more modern context. Uh, they were just good, fun Superman stories, but you know, I never really understood what, why people hated it, and uh, or did, at least those who were very vocal on the internet didn't like it. 
it was around the same time uh, M M Mark Wade Mark Wade was doing the Legion and people hated his Legion for some reason they weren't very happy about it I was uh, because one of that show don't tell sort of mentality that was going on there then they kept they said the same thing about music Superman like show don't tell and no, the thing is you know those were very compressed stories I mean, and uh, you know people would complain if you show too much oh it, they're just padding the story to make it last you know six issues uh, and if it's compressed and you get a much more um, done in one field twitch issue uh, you know people would be getting angry about that so you know that was my experience with with that reaction on, on that more classic approach to Superman so I think you know DC has been paying trying to pay attention to what fandom fans feel uh, for su feel because they really can find their footing with with Superman you know you you give what people want they don't like it uh, you give them something different they don't like it and uh, so that's why I feel Superman hasn't been as great uh, I think you know they had I think Superman is a bit of a a Wonder Woman approach sort of do something completely radical and win people over uh, break the mold even if people you know get angry about it uh, they should I mean Man of Steel for example uh, that movie did something completely different with Superman as well uh, they broke the mold they didn't I mean, of course, DC Warner Brothers wants a different tone for their movies, so it's a bit darker. I mean, you still see some elements of Superman there, but they didn't go for the uh, what was expected. So that's why some people hate it and some people love it. I love Man of Steel because it's a different take on Superman. Uh, you know, it, it it took a bit of cut to do something darker with with the character even though Superman is really Batman and he shouldn't be so dark but at the same time Man of Steel is sort of like Superman begins I mean you know he isn't really Superman yet just because he gets uh, a nice costume and a cape and flies and has all the power doesn't really make him be Superman he has to you know um, to get to that point he's gotta go through some experiences I mean that costume and the powers don't really make the Superman um, so it's running a bit long um, so I think I better cut it off here um, so yeah you should check out uh, Kurt Music's run um, um, I'll probably do a follow up to uh, break down some of the issues that you might want to look for or the arcs if there are any trades but I would probably start uh, if you can find up up and away which is the one he co wrote with uh, Jeff Johns. The next one would be uh, Back in Action, which also ran in Action Comics. And uh, I'll probably you know, do a comp uh, compilation of the, of the um, issues and the arcs. You may want to check out uh, for Kirk Superman. Um, so, with almost 25 minutes of recording, I say, as I always, until next time, keep smiling.